And now we are going to talk to David Suvi. He is the Executive Vice President and Chief Research Officer for the Institute of Insurance and Safety on the Highway. How are you, David? I'm good today. How are you, Javier? Excellent. Thank you. So we get uh, some, uh, I guess, uh, as always, good news and uh, some not so good news about some other new tests that you have conducted. And this guy, in this case, uh, mid-size SUVs, right? Right. Today uh, we released uh, crash test results for nine mid-size SUVs, and at the top of the list are two um, models from General Motors, the Chevrolet Equinox and um, its twin, the General Motors Terrain, and following right behind them is the Toyota Highlander with an acceptable rating. Yeah. And uh, again, uh, for uh, people who have not uh, heard about this new test, uh, that is not so new anymore. I guess it's like 18 months already, right? Like frontal partial uh, impact. Can you explain that, please, and how that impacts the, the safety of the occupants? Sure. Yeah, we've been doing this test for about a year and a half now. Uh, we introduced it um, with the idea of trying to make vehicles even safer than they are already. And it involves crashing the vehicle at 40 miles an hour into a rigid barrier, but only uh, a slim, slim sliver of the front end of the vehicle crushes against the barrier, which makes it um, harder for the vehicle to cope with um, the energy of the crash, because a lot of the structure that normally does that is inboard of um, the point of impact of the barrier. Yeah. So uh, in this case, uh, the IIHS has... Uh, test uh, gave the, um, the Equinox and the Terrain the best uh, top safety pick and then the Highlander right behind. They have to sustain the, uh, I mean, uh, like pass the, the test in, in different aspects, right? Correct. In order to earn a top safety pick plus, a vehicle needs to earn an acceptable or good rating in our new small overlap test plus good ratings in all of our old tests, which is a moderate overlap frontal test, the side impact test, a rear um, test of seats and head restraints and a roof strength test, and needs to be available with um, something we call front crash prevention systems, which are systems that warn drivers or in some cases apply automatic braking to prevent front to rear collisions with vehicles in front of you. So um, the two GM models meet all those criteria. Yeah, and um, uh, as I was reading in the, in the results of the test, these two cars were modified in the structure to, uh, in compared to the, I guess the, the the previous generation and maybe the the current generation. But they, the General Motors engineers modified the structure to make them safer, right? That's correct. I mean, we've been as we developed the test, we were meeting with uh, engineers from the different automakers, and you know, the General Motors engineers were paying very close attention, and we know that they included some uh, modifications to this version of the vehicle. Uh, especially intended uh, to provide better protection in this type of crash than its predecessor. Okay, so that's uh, the good news, I guess, but there's like the not so good news is uh, other models. And again, this is for the um, medium size SUVs, which uh, is one of the most popular segments. I mean, this is the kind of vehicle that a lot of people buy and drive here in the United States, right? Oh, yeah, this is a very popular um, segment. And at the bottom of the list um, of this group of nine vehicles are the uh, Honda Pilot and the Mazda CX-9. Unfortunately, these vehicles, um, in the same test that the GM model holds up, uh, these models um, collapse pretty pretty horribly so that, uh, you know, the risk of injury to drivers or people sitting on the right side and the right side impact would be uh, very high. Can you uh, explain uh, what will be the, the, the consequence, the physical uh, consequence for a passenger in this kind of um, accident uh, with these kind of cars that are that don't pass your test. Sure, um, you know we we definitely measure a high risk of leg injuries in crashes where the occupant compartment collapses. But the other problem we see is that in those cars that have the worst structural performance, sometimes the dummy's head slides off the airbag and it hits directly the A pillar or the instrument panel or the or the top of the door and that uh, suggests a very high risk of head injuries as well despite the fact that the airbag is deployed yeah so this means that not only the structure of the car has to be solid but also all the other safety elements as you mentioned the airbags have to to work in a in a good uh, like conjunction every everything together as as a, as a whole package 
Exactly. The whole thing needs to work as a system, and you know the the building block for that system is a strong structure. If the structure stays intact, then it's much easier to design airbags and seatbelts to do what they need to do. Would it be fair to say that the Honda Pilot uh, has uh, this uh, poor rating just because this is the older generation, and they I think they're about to come up with a new model uh, next year. So is that probably one of the reasons? Yeah, I think you know when we when we launch new tests. Um, you know, some manufacturers' um, products are in the end of their design cycle. And, you know, oftentimes that doesn't um, leave them enough time to make improvements before we run the test. Um, but as they redesign vehicles, as will happen with the Honda Pilot, you know, later this year, uh, we expect to see big improvements. In fact, Honda's luxury brand Acura um, MDX, which is also a midsize SUV in the luxury category, um, does very well in this test. So I guess that's uh, some uh, some guideline that of what we can expect for the new pilot when it comes out. Um, the other one in the middle of the test, so we have the Chevy Equinox, GMC Terrain, and Toyota Highlander Toy Safety Peak Plus, and then in the middle we have the Jeep Grand Cherokee, the Toyota 4Runner, and the 4 Explorer. Uh, and um, the, the Jeep Cherokee is the new one? Yes, it is the new Jeep Grand Cherokee. Okay, and the Toyota 4Runner, I guess, is in the same case as the Pilot. Maybe it's a previous generation compared to the Highlander, and that's why it doesn't uh, uh, test it that, that well. Right, I think the, the uh, 4Runner has been around in its current uh, design configuration for a number of years now. Okay, so also in the result uh, that, that, that the IHS provider says that... Uh, SUVs have become more safe in the in the previous generation. Is that because they are now more or less built on a platform of a car, more like a crossover, in, uh, and instead of like a, a truck base that it used to be? Um, I don't think it's so much a, a, a matter of there being car based as opposed to truck based, but um, you know we have seen a lot more attention to providing crash protection uh, in all segments of vehicles over the last 10 to 20 years. And so, um, you know, since we've been doing tests for safety ratings, we've seen a huge improvement in the level of protection that uh, manufacturers are designing into their products. Yeah, and uh, as you mentioned, all these new technologies like the crash prevention systems that pretty much in some cases stops the cars, uh, is this something that you mandate in your test, but like as you see something that might be eventually required by, by the authorities, uh, by the Department of Transportation to be included in cars as they were talking about, for example, other things at rear view cameras and other kind of things? Yes, I, I think that eventually we will see um, federal regulations requiring uh, some of this new technology that we're currently studying right now. Um, some of it looks very promising and the technology is developing quickly and, you know, promises to help prevent crashes in the first place, which is, you know, even better than um, having protection given that crashes occurred. So. Yeah, excellent. Uh, David, can you please also explain for people who, I mean, by now they should know, but uh, they're not familiar with the Institute, what other kind of uh, tests and, 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 and things do you do for the auto industry? Uh, well, so the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety is a nonprofit organization, and we're uh, supported by Uh, insurance companies that sell auto insurance in the United States. We do a range of research, all of it aimed at trying to figure out uh, how to prevent crashes and make those crashes um, have fewer consequences when they do occur. So in addition to the vehicle testing, we do research on traffic laws and road configurations and various things like that. So uh, in terms of uh, consumers' uh, advantages when, when they go and purchase a new car, The cars that get the top safety peak plus get a lower uh, premium for insurance? Uh, that may be the case in, in for, for some insurers. Um, you know, we don't get involved ourselves in the pricing of insurance, but many of the vehicles that earn our top safety peak uh, plus are also vehicles um, that have good insurance experience. Yeah, and also, I mean, we have to say that the, the, your own record, the, the, the driver's record, has a, a huge impact on the price of the premium. So that's like exactly. a Exactly. Uh, Where you live and how you drive and all those kinds of things factor yeah, you, into what uh, you pay for insurance. I, I've heard that even your education uh, is a big factor into that. Right. Everything. So David Suvi, Executive Vice President and Chief Research Engineer for the Institute of uh, Insurance and Highway Safety. Thank you very much for your information about the 
a new test on the medium mid mid size SUVs uh, for 2014, and uh, I guess you go back to the labs and uh, keep uh, testing cars, right? That's right. We'll go test some more cars, and uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, David. Okay, bye bye. Bye. Muy interesante ese reporte del Instituto de Aseguradoras y Seguridad en las Carreteras sobre la la protección que ofrecen las SUVs medianas aquí en el eh, mercado de Estados Unidos, en uno de los segmentos más importantes. Y les invito a que vayan a comprar autos.about.com, donde también publico todas las eh, reseñas y los temas de los temas de automóviles. Y lean en detalle, les leo aquí un pedazo solamente de este reporte. Por ejemplo, hablando de la Mazda 6, dice que la columna de la bisagra, donde está en la puerta del lado izquierdo, penetró 17 pulgadas dentro de la cabina, con lo cual la rueda delantera izquierda llegó prácticamente a la rodilla del test dummy, del muñeco que ponen para hacer las pruebas. Así que vayan a comprar autos.about.com para que lean en español un informe completo sobre las pruebas del IIHS sobre SUVs medianas del modelo 2014. Ya regresamos, esto es Auto 060, yo soy Javier Mo. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.